This is the stuff that usually doesn't make it on YouTube. Good morning, beautiful people. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of some downtime that I've currently got today, <laughs> and I get to plant potatoes. Uh, it's still February, it's still a little bit early, but given the time that I have this season, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick some taters in the ground, see what happens. Yeah. Usually I wait a couple more weeks, you know, farther into like March before I start planting potatoes, but I don't know. I just have a sneaky suspicion that's not gonna be a real cold spring. So, uh, in this stack of stuff right here, uh, these are our potatoes that we grew, and we ate all of the big ones. We ate all the, you know, the low hanging fruit, if you will. And we left all of the, you know, tiny ones. Uh, yeah, they've all sprouted. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. warm in here. Those crates have slats in them so the light gets in. And these potatoes have gone crazy. So I'm gonna unstack this, pick the potatoes that I wanna plant, and we're gonna take those out and we're gonna stick them in the ground. So. Do you have in that box, we do have the big potatoes we saved for seed. I don't know if I wanna plant those yet. I wanna plant these since these kinda of have a timer. Okay. Yeah. These are starting to shrivel up and I think we're gonna miss our like window with them. Yeah. Um, so I'll show you guys that here in a second. These these have really gone crazy. Okay, sweet potatoes, you can go over here. As you guys can see, those have like major league sprouted. And a lot of these, I mean, these are about the size of what you'd buy in the store if you're buying seed potato. These are all like ready to go on the ground. These are the reds. This can just be combined. Some of these are even smaller. Like that one's a decent size one. Like that's an odd russet that's in there. Well, I guess I'll plant that too. But as you can see, a lot of these are like very much ready to go and they're starting to get kind of squishy. Uh, which means they're at the end of their life. We saved a lot of the green ones, the ones that were exposed to light when they were growing, and they uh, they took longer to sprout. So, it's all kind of just an experiment. All right, actually, the pile that I want to plant is actually that box right there. Here's all of our russet seeds. We're gonna plant those later. These are the ones I want to plant. These ones for sure. These, I, you can already tell just by looking at them, they look like a bunch of like dark little snakes. <laughs> so these are some... Adirondack blue. That's right. These ones are Adirondack blue. I planted these last year just as a... Uh, it was kind of a spur of the moment. I was at Tractor Supply, saw a little bag of seed potatoes for Adirondack blue, and they did so good for us. And we really enjoyed eating them. So we made sure we saved a whole bunch for seed. We saved all the smaller ones like these and they're still viable. So I'm gonna take this whole thing out there, plant a row. Um, we have actually cut and let these scab over before so you can you know, multiply how many you're planting. That does all right. Uh, we've also just stuck the entire seed potato in the ground. Since we have so many seed potatoes, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna stick the whole seed potato in the ground let them do their thing. So I'm gonna set aside what I'm taking out there to the garden and I guess clean up my mess that I'm making right here. <laughs> That's like... Looks like spider legs. It does, <laughs> like little spider <laughs> legs sticking up. Oh, I have another bag. Those ones need to go up, but I think these ones dried out too. Yeah, those ones are pretty crispy. I'll stick them in the ground anyways. Uh, these are some wood prairie uh, potatoes that a viewer sent us. They got sent at the very end of the season and even in the greenhouse, the greenhouse gets too cold. We don't have a heated greenhouse, so we didn't have a place to stick them. And so I was kind of hoping they would last until spring, but it doesn't look like they made it. But I will bring them anyways. I will stick them in the dirt. Maybe they'll wake up. Maybe there's just a tiny spark of life left in them, but we will see. All right, I got my potatoes. I'm gonna put my boots on, grab a shovel and go. Just gotta grab a shovel uh, and a Brett. Brett, Brett is uh, going to take over a lot of the garden this year. I don't know, I'm helping with a little bit, but I'm sure as the, the season progresses and it starts feeling more and more like spring, uh, I will be allowed to do less and less, which is kind of a weird place to find myself. But honestly, I am just like super stoked that one of the boys has an interest in the garden. That's a really cool place to be. Uh, let's see, where's my favorite shovel? That's my 
second favorite is shovel. And it looks like that one right there. And just as a little sneak preview, we are done with the foundation. Well, all but one, one that I, uh, one pile that I had to redo because I messed up and uh, I measured once and poured concrete. You guys will find that out on uh, Friday's video. Uh, stay tuned if you guys want to follow our build build series, uh, building the addition for this mobile home. That's our Friday build series. Uh, everything I film during the week will get covered in that video. That way it's all in one place. It's easy to find. It's easy to look back on. Uh, I'm, we already have a playlist going. So stay tuned if you want to see what we're doing with our, our mobile home build series where we're adding on. Go ahead and follow it. Got my shovels. I'm going to head out there to the garden. Are you ready for a ride? Yeah! Okay, you ready to plant potatoes? Yeah! Okay. So as you can tell, this is where the chickens were actually this morning. I moved them just over there, gave them some grass, and they're quite happy. They're ecstatic even. This spot right here last year was our squash patch. Um, it did pretty good. We planted our squash too late. We tried an experiment and it failed miserably. Uh, we will move on. Uh, this year we will be getting our squash in the ground very early this year. Last year I had heard something from somebody that, yeah, you want to beat the squash bugs, you plant after 4th of July. That was not the case. Uh, that was a miserable fail. We barely got any squash. Uh, all of the pumpkins failed. Most of the other squash failed. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a kind of a bust. There is not very much work that we have to do. We had this spot kind of uh, protected with weed barrier. All I had the chickens do was come in here and eat any you know squash bugs that were hiding under the uh, weed barrier. Enough talking. There ain't nothing to it to it but to do it. Kind of chunky, kind of ugly. I really don't want to rototill. Honestly, probably the best thing to do, this dirt's pretty soft. It's just a little compacted because we had chickens on it and you know we have a whole bunch of rain and then it dries out. All things considering, for having not grown in it since there wasn't plants in it uh, since August, September, something like that. All things considering, this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy about this. I put the chickens in here after we pulled the, the fabric, the uh, weed fabric. Uh, to let them kind of sterilize it, manure on it. And they did a good job, but they kind of smoothed over the rows a little bit. Long story short, it might be a little bit, I don't know, nicer looking to just bring the rototiller in here, but I don't want to have to completely rebuild all of these beds. It's a lot of work. And rototilling takes a long time. I don't want to do that. Uh, I just did my row in about 10 minutes. Brett is nearly done with his row. All we're gonna do is just dig the bottoms, drop the potatoes in the bottoms, take some of that dirt that we just took out, bury those potatoes, let them do their thing. We have got it all dug up. It's kind of hard to see from this perspective. There you go. Now you can see the uh, furrows. This year, we're gonna try planting in the bottom. And then as the potatoes grow, we're just gonna take dirt and mound them. Um, I've tried both ways. I've mounded them and I have not mounded them. And honestly, I've had about the same yield. So we're gonna do easy mode today and we're gonna try mounding. I've got a whole bunch in that bucket over there. I've got some amendments. We're gonna add, uh, basically bone dust and then we might go get some compost we might not there's actually so much chicken poop that we've kind of like worked in I have a whole wagon full of chicken poop over there that I didn't want to till in because that's gonna be too rich I need to compost it but we're looking pretty good so Brett you want to grab the purple potatoes and we'll do those first Look at the size of some of those sprouts those are incredible
Honestly, I feel like I should have uh, rotor tilled. It is a bit chunky to try to backfill and, you know, bury the potatoes. But, I mean, it's not the, the lumpiest soil I've ever worked in. Really, out here, these big beds, they need so much more organic matter um, to really, like, you know, be in a good place to where they're kind of like our garden beds. Our garden beds, I don't have to rotor till anymore. Uh, they're just to a point now where all I have to do is top dress. Eventually, we'll get that way with these beds, but not this year. So, rather than till everything, we're just going to start moving towards kind of kind of like a just a deep mulch. We'll mulch everything real heavy. Um, once it's mulched, you know, planted, mulched, all that, we'll just keep mulch on it for weed suppression, and eventually that mulch will break down, feeding the soil, and we'll have richer and richer soil. One thing that I I, I have noticed is we, we have added a lot of organic matter here, and I've never really had a lot of earthworms. This year, just this little bit of digging we did in the walkways, I'm finding earthworms, and we're finding some pretty big earthworms too. So that's a good sign it means what we're doing is actually feeding the soil improving the soil and as time goes on there will be less and less soil disturbance and honestly it's a lot easier even though this just took me like an hour to you know turn over a little bit of dirt in the walkway so we could plant it's still less impact than rototilling all of this ground for the next four hours it's way easier on my arms and my back it's quiet it's so peaceful and quiet and beautiful today. You really can't beat it. So a little bit of shovel time is good for you. Yeah, maybe not a lot, but a little bit is good. We're gonna plant the rest of that box. We finished up the box of the purples. Got about a row and a row and a quarter. No, no, no. Two, eh, probably two full rows, because that row, that first row is not a full row. And then we came up maybe, I don't know, six feet here. So that's about two full rows of purple. Which honestly, I think is what we did last year. I think we did two two rows of purple, the uh, Adirondack blue. So now we're just filling out the rest of the bed with all of these reds, and uh, we'll get them all backfilled, and then we'll go get some hay, and we're just going to use hay as mulch. We'll get it all covered up, and we'll be done. All right, we are all backfilled. We're gonna grab the, the golf cart and a wagon and go haul a half a bale up here. See if the golf cart will handle that. Uh, and then we'll just get this all mulched and walk away. We'll forget about it, which is, that's the way I like gardening. Uh, the more I've done this and with, uh, you know, projects like that going on, uh, it's nice to just get stuff in the ground and walk away if it, if it does good cool if it doesn't we'll still get something out of it plus you know Brett's gonna be managing the garden a lot this year so I know we're gonna have some stuff out of the garden all right let's go get some hay Mulching is done, potatoes are in, and that's that's pretty much it. All right, Brett, Brett did actually want to try something. 
and I guess I have to explain some backstory. This past winter, as we uh, we did our classes, our pig classes, homestead butchery. The first class we had, there was a gentleman that uh, attended one of our classes, and he brought me a little gift, uh, which was honestly an incredible gift. But I just haven't had a minute to deal with it. His name was Chuck. Chuck showed up and brought me uh, a machine. So this, this right here, is called a David Bradley garden tractor. They're pretty old. Um, I wanna say this one, I don't know, it's probably coming up on 100 years old. It's pretty old. Uh, the motor is missing a whole bunch of parts, like the carburetor, so that's fine. But it's the, uh, the rest of the, the workings that it has are there, they're complete. He brought me this machine and he said, if anyone can fix it, I know you can. And if you can, if you can use it, there you go. It's, you know, a choice between scrapping it or bringing it to me. And honestly, I'm pretty cool with that. So probably what I'll do is I'll probably end up swapping the motor out because I do actually have a motor. I just got to go through the gearbox and there's like a few things to fix. And, you know, a set of tires. But all in all, it's just one of those things when I have a minute, I'm going to get to that. A big thank you to Chuck, by the way, that every time I see that thing, it's just like, man, that's cool. He also brought me a bunch of implements, so I'll go up here and show you guys the implements. What is there? There's two sets of discs. There's a harrow. There's cedar. There's mowers. There's a couple bottom plows. There's, oh, I forget the name of that one, uh, it's for making rows. Yeah, a whole bunch of really cool implements. And they're all implements designed to be pulled behind the uh, garden tractor. I don't have a garden tractor that is currently operational. Like I said, it would take some work, but Brett was like wondering if he could start, you know, telling up this spot and the subject of all of these implements came up. It's like, I wonder if we could drag them behind the lawnmower. It's worth a shot. It's a little bit heavier than that garden tractor, a little bit wider, but it'd be kind of cool. So we're, you guys get to come with this while we mess around. This is just us kind of doing fun stuff. This is the stuff that usually doesn't make it on YouTube, but we'll see, we'll see if it works. Okay, uh, let me get out of the way. Pull this thing on down there, see if it'll plow. All right, that one's not turning, so Drag that one back up here and we'll swap them. We're gonna need a little bit of weight if we're gonna make that work. Yeah, put that one away. So how's it work? Great. Uh, how long would it have taken to do that much, just that much with a rototiller? All day. <laughs> All day. So a whole bunch of passes, we'll get it. And then we could probably switch over and use the uh, disc. That's crazy. And it's going deeper than the rototiller. You know, I get done preaching about, uh, let's not disturb the soil over here, but this spot, forget about this spot. <laughs> That's all right. We got them. We'll try them out. It's cool. Thanks for all the uh, implements, Chuck. That was, that's really cool. We've been waiting to do this and try those out for quite a while. Uh, ever since, uh, I believe that was like November. That's really cool. Definitely faster than I could ever rototill it. All right, now that our pea bed is ready and I soaked my peas overnight, this is just part of them. My hands that's are a little dirty. That's okay. So I've got them soaked. So the reason I do this is because it just kind of like wakes them up. It's very similar to if you're sprouting seeds for fresh eating, how you soak them overnight or for like at least a couple hours and then you drain them and rinse them and you know eventually they start sprouting. So this is the same thing. We're letting the water get in there and um, let them absorb it and do their thing and wake up and get ready for sprouting. <laughs> so I've had really, really good luck with pre-soaking my peas in the past and I've actually had not good luck when I don't soak my peas. So 
that's the method I'm gonna keep doing. I have two kinds here. I've got my potted peas, which are the ones that you shell and you eat the peas fresh. English peas, and then I've got snow peas, which are the ones that you eat immature, where they're flat and you eat the pot itself. So I've got um, multiple varieties. What I'm doing this year is basically just trying to use up our, a lot of our old seed. So I threw in a couple different packages of each kind into the bowls and I'm just mixing them up. I'm not keeping track of anything. I'm just like, I mean, I have the, the varieties I have. Like there's some Calvin Wonders in this one. I think there's some Sugar Ann's in the potted ones. Um, we like those and I just had old seeds. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna dump a couple packets in the bowl together, see what happens, whatever comes up, cool. It's all good. Um, this year with, you know, the addition that we're doing and that addition that we're doing, it's basically just, uh, Whatever comes out of our garden is a blessing and we're not gonna freak out if it doesn't all turn out perfect. So it's all good. So I'm gonna get these in the ground. I'm gonna start with my potted peas because those are the ones I really, really want and see how far I get. And then I will fill in with the snow peas on one of the ends. Alrighty. But I gotta get all the clips. Too. Oh, are you getting all the clips? Yeah. Okay. I have to turn in the lines to get the clips. <laughs> you do? Okay. So the only thing I've noticed about having soaked peas is they are a little bit squishier, so you want to make sure you're not destroying them, crushing them as you're working. All right, peas are planted. You'll notice that I have a lot of room outside of the trellis because I planted them so close. So in a couple weeks when it warms up just a little bit more and we get a little bit closer to our frost date, um, I will plant some lettuce or beets or something like that and I'll fill in the front sections. So, I mean, we've got space there. We might as well grow something, right? So, but peas for today are done. All right, the time has come for the end of the day festivities. <laughs> Festivities. I like how you call it eating festivities. Well, we're having steaks. <laughs> yes, it's very much festive. So it's it's a it's a festive occasion. It is. We're doing some uh, porterhouse steaks mm -hmm. and a couple sirloin steaks, mm -hmm. and we're gonna steak it up. Yeah. You said you're doing some rice. Yeah, just making some some plain white rice to go with it, and then I've got some root veggies that I'm gonna fry up. They're leftovers, so I'm just gonna heat them up real quick. All right, sounds yeah. good. Those shrunk a bunch. They are pretty big. We're gonna let these rest. The rice is pretty much done. It's finishing. So, about the time the rice needs, the steak needs, so then we're gonna eat. Meg actually killed that entire T-bone. I did. And I didn't. <laughs> it was a lot, but it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite tasty. <laughs> yeah. You killed that steak. It's gone. It's gone. All right, with that, we're gonna end it right here. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.